Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We'll start our Mass for the fourth Friday of Lent in about one minute. Thank you. O God, save me by your name, by your power defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer, give ear to the words of my mouth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Before we begin, just a few announcements. Uh, I just will try to live stream again today around noontime, uh, a period of Eucharistic adoration, silent adoration, and uh, I'll probably conclude that around 12.45 uh, to give you all a chance to tune in to the Holy Father's Orbi at Orbi message, his message to the city and to the world that he usually gives only on Easter and Christmas, but he's giving today and watching it and participating in the prayers carries with it a plenary indulgence, and it's a time to pray, pray everyone around the world with the Holy Father for a healing from this pandemic, and you can watch it on EWTN, um, and that will be at 1 o'clock local time, our time, 1 o'clock at 6 p.m. Rome time uh, on EWTN, but also on the web at uh, www.vatican.va um, and, uh, and other places too, when we put some stuff yesterday on Facebook and all that, and links and all that, so hopefully you'll find that. So adoration around noon, the Holy Father at 1, and then we'll uh, attempt to live stream Stations of the Cross uh, from our church today. Uh, it's another new adventure in live streaming, and join us and uh, participate, and hopefully we'll successfully pray those stations together, even at a distance, to, but to have that opportunity. And what did I leave out? Oh, yes, uh, and tomorrow morning's Mass at 9 a.m. Uh, will be pre-recorded, and uh, um, so we'll, you'll look in the same place on Facebook, and we'll have a YouTube link, or some, it'll be there, some one way or the other. So. Uh, we look forward to having you join us again tomorrow morning. Uh, our Sunday Mass, uh, as I said before, will be live streamed tomorrow, Saturday at 3 p.m., and we'll live stream it in Spanish at 4 p.m. La Misa de Domingo, lo vamos a poner en live stream, hacer el live stream mañana, sábado, a las cuatro de la tarde. My brothers and sisters, to prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, Grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked said among themselves, thinking not aright, let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He, he sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and styles himself a child of the Lord. To us, he is the censure of our thoughts. Merely to see him is a hardship for us, because his life is not like that of others, and different are his ways. 
He judges us be debased. He holds aloof from our paths as from things impure. He calls blessed the destiny of the just and boasts that God is his father. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the son of God, he will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put him to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of them. They were their thoughts, but they erred, for their wickedness blinded them, and they knew not the hidden counsels of God. Neither did they count on a recompense of holiness, nor discern the innocent soul's reward. The word of the Lord. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He watches over all his bones. Not one of them shall be broken. The Lord redeems the lives of his servants. No one incurs guilt who takes refuge in him. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus moved about within Galilee. He did not wish to travel to Judea because the Jews were trying to kill him. But the Jewish feast of tabernacles was near. But when his brothers had gone up to the feast, he himself also went up, not openly, but as it were, in secret. Some of the inhabitants of Jerusalem said, Is he not the one they are trying to kill? And look, he is speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Could the authorities have realized that he is the Christ? But we know where he is from. When the Christ comes, no one will know where he is from. So Jesus cried out in the temple area as he was teaching and said, You know me, and also know where I am from. Yet I did not come on my own. But the one who sent me, whom you do not know, is true. I know him because I am from him, and he sent me. So they tried to arrest him, but no one laid a hand upon him because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Our psalm refrain today was, uh, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and I don't know, I have a song I can't get out of my mind from, I think, the early 60s. It was, uh, What Becomes of the Brokenhearted? Remember that song? Yes. What Becomes of the Brokenhearted? I don't remember any of the other words, so I hope it's not a bad song about bad things, but it's such a poignant thing. What becomes of the brokenhearted? And in a sense, in various ways, I think we live in a moment in history with a lot of brokenheartedness, because particularly those who are ill, so many people have to be isolated and alone, and those who are suffering and those who are dying as a practical thing, are, are dying alone, how brokenhearted. And our gospel, our first reading of the gospel today, it concerns people trying to uh, trip up and bring down uh, first the prophet of, of, um, who we hear of in wisdom, and then, of course, Jesus, and trying to figure, well, who is this Jesus? Not believing he could be the one who was to come. And part of it is he promises and is the manifestation of something unexpected. And Bishop Barron writes about this, Bishop Robert Barony, you know, he says that um, people were used to, um, and in most other religions in reality, there's something that you're trying to strive for and get to and find and climb this steep hill, if you will, to get to what's needed to have uh, perfection or salvation or call it what you will, that it's our job to go and find it. 
And what's confusing about Jesus, and this is how close he is to the brokenhearted, allows his own heart to be broken. The father allows his own heart to be broken in the loss of his son for our salvation. Uh, the, the salvation comes and looks for us and chases us down and seeks us out. Jesus constantly coming and seeking and looking for us. And that's not what people expect in a savior or in their God, but yet that is the God that we, we have out of the solicitude of God for our need. So I think in this time to realize that Jesus who comes, he suffers, <clears throat> excuse me, he suffers and he rises, raises from the dead for our behalf. He's come close to us in our brokenheartedness. So our natural prayer would be gratitude. And here's a homework assignment. And Bishop Barron in the same commentary mentions a, uh, a poem I hadn't thought about in a while. I was introduced to it in the seminary, an old poem, I think a British guy named Francis Thompson. Uh, and the, uh, the poem is called The Hound of Heaven. It's a long poem, so your homework assignment is to Google it, The Hound of Heaven, as a hound like in a dog. Uh, the Hound of Heaven by Francis Thompson, and your assignment is to read it and pray with it, and uh, you will not be disappointed. Jesus is close to the brokenhearted, and he invites us to bring whatever breaks our hearts to him for healing. For missionaries, may the Lord strengthen them in their zeal to spread the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For policymakers, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in passing laws protecting all life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those persecuted for righteousness' sake, may God bless them with courage and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family of faith gathered here, may the Lord bless us in our Lenten efforts of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they rest in paradise with all the angels and saints. And for Esther Fernandez, whom we remember in this, at this Eucharist in a special way, let us pray to the Lord. And for any special intentions that you hold dear to your heart, we pray to the Lord. And we continue to pray for all those who are suffering in any way because of uh, the coronavirus and all those who care for them, whether at home or in the hospitals or medical facilities, and all those who serve us in in. Uh, uh, essential services in these times. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord God, you're close to the brokenhearted. Be near to us now and receive these intentions and answer them according to your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that, etern that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your I invite you to exchange a sign of peace at home. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to join me in the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. In Christ we have redemption by his blood and forgiveness of our sins, in accord with the riches of his grace. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we pray Pope Francis's prayer to Mary in time of pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. <laughs>